always happen into the five boroughs. On the island or in Jersey. We're talking We're about talking it. about it. 1050 ESPN. New York. New York. Back now to ESPN New York Tonight. Here's Bill Daugherty. On the Extension PM hotline at 1-800-919-3776. Back to the phones we go. Mark. Mark is, Mark is in Queens. Mark, you're on ESPN New York. Bill, how you doing, man? Great night, man. Listen, um, got me up way past my bedtime, man. I'm so excited about this move, You'll man. You'll be sorry tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I got the white, got the white school facing me right now, man. Listen, <laughs> um, Stephen Smith and I very rarely agree, man, but he hit the nail on the head on so many points tonight, man. And pretty much what I wanted to touch on. The first thing I want to say is when, when, when they made the Ray Allen and Kevin Garnett deal out in Boston, I told all my buddies, they're going to make it work. The older you get, the more you, re you root for. You root for star superstars, of course, but certain guys you just can't root for. You root for people first, you know, and we got good people. When, when you talk about Melo and Billup and Amari, these guys are going to make it work. They're going to do what needs to be done. I'm a little concerned about D'Antonio and his unhealthy relationship. I don't think it's a happy night to the D'Antonio family tonight because when he made that comment early in the week about the, the Nuggets offering too much, that kind of scared me a little bit. I never seen me a little unorthodox for a coach to come out and comment on personal. Let, let, let me tell you something now. Let me tell you something now. I can see Mike D'Antoni smiling from up in Westchester County. I hope so. I hope you're right. I hope you're right. But, you know, what I'm a little worried about because, like, 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 like Steve Smith said, the pressure's on him now. You know, the pressure's on him now. He's got, he's got to have to tweak his system a little bit now because he's got the players in place now. I think his little with his connection with Gallinari and his father over in Europe, and then I heard that his, Felton was a, his brother coach Felton in the AAU team. They were going to Felton school. since he was a kid in high school yeah, in South yeah. Carolina. I think there was a little unhealthy connection going there with the D'Antonio family. I think, I think you got to give kudos, first of all, to Melo for holding his gun, saying, I want to come to New York fans. Let's be patient. They fans that didn't think Amari could play without Nash. Let's be patient. Let's let Melo adjust. He's going to be he's the best mid-range scorer Mark, in the game. I, I'm going to give Carmelo credit for playing this thing out, doing it the right way, giving Denver fans plenty to cheer about in his seven years there, right up to the very end. I mean, come on, last week the guy scores 50 points, has a 40-point game and a 30-point game last week. He's probably going to be the NBA player of the week coming to the New York Knicks. Uh, you know, he, this was going to happen. This was going to happen, and he just made it clear. Denver, you can do it my way, or you can do it the other way. But I'm going to the New York Knicks. Now, make it happen to your benefit, or make it happen that you get stuck with nothing. Either way, it's going to happen. I give him credit for that. I thought it was a little naive of him to, to, to want the love of the Denver fans when you look at the body of work for his seven years and what he has done with that team, what he means to the team. Understand this, Denver fans are P.O.'d, man. They were losing their guy. Just like Cleveland fans were that they were losing their guy. Just like New Orleans fans will be when Chris Paul decides to take his talents someplace else. Just like Darren Williams will be when he decides to take his talents someplace else. I think it's a little, uh, it's more than a little naive for, fan, for, for players to expect fans to love them on the way out. It doesn't work that way. You're taking something from them. You are definitely taking something from them, and for them to smile while it's happening to them, I think you're asking a little bit too much. 1-800-919-3776, Harold's in Brooklyn. You're on ESPN New York, Harold. Hey, hey, brother Bill, how you doing? What's going on? Talk to I'm you. so glad for all you Knicks fans, but if y'all think y'all gonna be my Chicago Bulls in the playoffs, y'all really losing it for real. I don't know what Kool Aid y'all drinking, but y'all need to eat that Kool Aid alone, boy. Y'all okay. is not beating my Bulls in no playoffs. So if you say so, Harold. <laughs> I'm telling you, with Carmelo, I'm glad you got him because I'm tired of hearing the Carmelo crap. But y'all ain't beat my Bulls in no uh, playoffs. I just hope Rose doesn't step on somebody's ankle between now and then. Man, we, let me tell you, we, we, we my, let me tell you my confidence about my Bills. Boston and Miami better not go to sleep. It's tall order to beat Boston and or Miami. I'm not even putting the Knicks in that classification yet. Boston yeah, and Miami I, I, are two totally different Yeah, animals. but they better not sleep on my Bulls. My Bulls will sleep up on them. I'm telling you, my Bulls is ready. You know what? Here's the thing. And, Harold, I, I appreciate your love and affection for your Chicago Bulls. But let me, let, me, let, me, let me get this straight. 
This uh -huh. is a team last year that was what a couple of games over 500. Yes. Okay. But this, it, but it this shows is a you team. The... Wait a minute. This is a team that a couple of years ago gave Boston a, a great first round series in the playoffs, right? That's right. Right. This, this is a team now that added a quality front a free agent in Carlos Boozer. This is a team that also has a first year head coach, right? Right. I mean, all these things were so right in Chicago leading up to this season that now you've made a couple of changes, and I got total respect for your record, although two of your losses did come against the New York Knicks. I got total respect for, for, for Rose as a player. I, I've uh, seen it myself. I did the game when they played the Knicks here on Christmas Day. Derek Rose, man, they have just a totally different team when he is on the floor. I that, get all of that, okay? That, yeah. But if the Knicks can figure out how to make this work, I'll take them against the Bulls. Yo, I, Bill, I, I love you because you're a true Knicks fan, but don't bet your money, please. All right, Al, we'll see. Me and you might have to make a little side wager if if we find that they're going to meet remember, the Bulls. Remember, I'm the same guy that you're a year older than, too. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that, right? <laughs> yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Thanks a so lot. Al, I appreciate it. We'll talk to you right, about man. Thanks for the All call. Right. One eight hundred nine one nine three seven. That was one of the comical moments on this show. <laughs> Al said, "I'm probably you, you know you, you sound a little young." And Al just found out I'm older than you, Al. <laughs> we have fun at one eight hundred nine one nine three seven seven six. Frank in Westchester, you're on ESPN New York. Bill, how are you? What's up, Frank? Here's the fly in the ointment regarding all of this stuff. As you probably know, I very rarely agree with the drama queen, Stephen A. Smith. But there is one thing I do agree with him on tonight. <laughs> there is one thing I agree with him on. He said that the onus is on Dan Tony to make adjustments. Mm -hmm. Here's my prediction. Dan Tony will make zero adjustments, Probably and they right. will continue to lose 125 to 124. Write it down. And that's the kind of thing, Frank, that will lead to Mike D'Antoni being a bit of a quandary when he comes up on the final year of his contract next year. Great coaches, great coaches, and I'm talking about guys like Pat Riley, which is the most glaring example to me. Pat Riley had showtime in Los Angeles. He had three first ballot bona fide Hall of Famers on his team in Magic Johnson, in James Worthy, in Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He won championships with that group. Then he came here to New York. Didn't win any championships, but made a couple of championship runs with John Starks. Huh? A guy he didn't know about until Pat Riley came to town. A guy he basically picked up off the scrap heap. Guys like Anthony Mason, another guy. You didn't know anything about him unless you went to high school with him in Queens. Who's Anthony Mason going to be as an NBA player? Charles Oakley, clearly a role player in Chicago, but when he came here, he took a bigger role. But still, this was a gun that had one bullet, Patrick Ewing. What did a great coach do? He says, you know what, forget about Showtime. We got a lunch pail team. We got a down and dirty team. We're going to grit and grind and get the ball to Patrick. And what do you know? Couple conference finals? NBA final? Didn't win, but they got there. Great coaches adjust to their talent. Mike D'Antoni has shown you with his win totals in this league, with the fantastic seasons that he had in Phoenix, and with an incomplete team here in New York this year. Couple of games over 500. Nothing great about that. Let's see what he's made of now. Let's see if the coach is great or the system's great. Because he definitely has the kind of players. Not saying he's winning a championship yet, but the Knicks are a heck of a lot better than they were 24 hours ago.